Test, test. Test, test. Lenny Kravitz, uh, Testing, one, two, test. Test, test. Mic check. Amen, hallelujah. Let's get started this evening. Always a joy, amen. You know the word of God, it says give God praise, sing songs to his name, and so we're gonna sing a song tonight. Let's clap our hands, lifting our voices, sing and bring a song. Bring a song to the Lord. Come and sing and come and sing. Praise the ring, we'll bring us 
Lord. We are tearing down principalities, Lord. We lift you up in this place. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's slow it down this evening. Let's stand to our feet. Let's lift our hands and worship. Lifting our voice, amen, and surrendering to our Redeemer, our Savior, amen, singing this song, Oh, at the cross, I bow my knee.
greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? And at the cross I bow my knee. Where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than God this evening because he wants that relationship because he is Jehovah Rapha amen the Lord who heals this is why we can come before God in prayer contending for people's salvation because they are broken spiritually they are hurting and so for salvation let's pray for JC let's pray for Diamond Let's also contend, amen, for our friends and family members, hallelujah, just believing God just to move upon their hearts, their minds, and their souls, and that they would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. For healing, amen, let's pray for Julie Bohorquez. Her surgery is, in, is tomorrow. So let's just pray 
God's protection upon her life. Let's also pray for Sister Liava as we prayed for her this morning. We're coming against fib- uh, fibromyalgia, also diabetes, and a few other things. Amen. Our sister just needs an overhaul and feels, amen, that these things hinder her from doing God's work. And so that is a good thing to strive for, amen, to do God's will, amen, to the utmost. Hallelujah. And so let's pray for our sister. Let's contend, amen. Truly intercede, even on your own time, your own personal prayer, amen. Let's lift up our sister. Let's also pray for Virginia. And then uh, I don't have it written on here, but I am going to also ask you pray for our brother Jeff, amen, also dealing with things that uh, he was praying for this morning. Hallelujah. Let's also go ahead and continue on with Sister Molly, Brother Ken, just believing God, amen, those that all came up this morning that God moved, amen. God already moved on Sister Molly, amen. Her back is much better. And let me tell you that the devil tries these things, amen. He'll make you think that it's just a natural thing, and it's not. And that's why we got to stand upon the word of God that he'll give us, amen, discernment. And he always gives us dominion through his son, Jesus. And so that's the great thing. We can operate from victory in that. And then also with that, let's pray, continually pray for Pastor Glenn Cluck. He is doing better, but amen, he still has a ways to go. Hallelujah. They are a little, a few hours every day, just taking him off of, I forgot what it was, amen, just seeing if, uh, how he's functioning, and so he's doing a little better day by day, but amen, he does need a complete healing to get out of the hospital, hallelujah. Let's also be praying, amen, special requests, we may not know the need, but we can, we know the people, or some of the people, and God knows exactly who we're talking about, whoever wrote it down, God knows who it is, so let's pray for Walker, for Beth, for Tony the Perry family, also the Dyer family, hallelujah, let's believe God, amen, for whatever need that they have, amen, let's also be praying for our fellowship, hallelujah, just that we are placed, amen, over 2,700 churches worldwide, and as I was talking to Brother Andre this morning, oh, that's the other people I want to pray for, he was standing in the gap for three people, and all of them are from Africa, two of them are from Ghana, and um, I forgot where the other one was from but it's still in Africa and one of them is a preacher pastor not sure what to do because they get they got hit just as hard amen COVID has shut things down and the pastor is not knowing where to go or what to do and so we need to lift him up amen because especially a man of God that is in distress we need to pray because it can be the downfall of so many people that he has been teaching reaching imparting And so let's pray, amen, for these people that, I don't remember their names, amen, but they are in Africa. And so let's believe God. And let's also pray for Andre, amen. He's usually only able to join us, amen, one service a week, which is Sunday morning uh, because of his job. But let's just pray that God would just keep him, help him. And if it's his will, amen, to be able to come to other services, hallelujah. And then going back to our fellowship, let's just be praying, amen, for each and every pastor across the globe, amen. There's people that churches, amen, that are having a hard time, especially in California, with uh, some states just totally coming against churches meeting. It's crazy because even the African pastor was saying, it's crazy in America that, you know, they can protest, but they can't go to church. And so that's just the strategy of how just trying to take something that is going on to come against the kingdom of God. And this is why we need to intercede and pray. Most of all, his will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. If you also have a need that's heavy upon your heart that has not been listed, just show that above lifting every hand. And as always, if you're on live stream, social media, amen, please message us. We'd love to be a part of what you're doing. Hallelujah. Uh, What you are contending for, amen, because we can pray and intercede because the prayer of a righteous person avails much. Hallelujah. And I think the world knows that even if they don't believe in God, they'll always come to those that pray and say, hey, will you help me? Because they know something in the back of their mind that God is real and that people that pray to the almighty God has a connection. So let's go before God. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Ken to open us up in prayer as prayer subsides. So let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and glory. You are worthy to be praised. And we come before you right now, God. We're asking, Lord, for needs to be met, for lives to be changed. And we are contending, Lord, for your will to be done. We love you and we thank you.
Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Door Church where Jesus Christ is still changing lives. Um, Sister Molly, can you check? I don't think I put do not disturb on my phone. We don't want people calling or texting while we're trying to film. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But once again, amen. Welcome to the Door Church where Jesus Christ is still changing lives. We are seeing God on the move. Amen. God met with us this morning. If you missed out on the, the healing service, amen. It, like I said, we can always pray for God to move and heal people in every service. So you just have to come up. Hallelujah. And God can move. Hallelujah. But regular announcements. Let's not forget Wednesday night, amen, our regular service, prayer at 6, service at 7, going to be part 11 of this series. We will have work night at 6.30, on th- uh, 6.30 p.m. on Thursday night, which is the 17th. And then this Friday, amen, the game night, 7 p.m., hallelujah, going to have a good time, so be inviting people out, hallelujah. And then if you have a game that we haven't heard of or uh, maybe we don't have, uh, maybe you can bring it and we can see if we can play it, hallelujah, You're just going to have an awesome time uh, with fellowship with godly Christian people, amen. Then Saturday, we do have song service practice at 10 a.m., then outreach at 11 o'clock. Uh, the drive-in concert is canceled, as I stated this morning. We're saving that and saving the finances for the 3rd of October for our major outreach before our revival, so just remember that. But I uh, did get a call today for the Moore concert. Uh, Pastor Marcos wants Remix, amen, to minister uh, for their concert, which is 6 o'clock that evening. It's going to be in a park uh, park over there and more. So if you're wanting to come and check it out and just uh, fellowship, amen, by all means, you can do that. If you're wanting to come, just let me know, and I will give you the address. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, of course, um, the more revival starts that Sunday going through Thursday. Don't forget about that and that our regular service times will stay the same, but we will go and support Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday if you're able to. I encourage you, amen, to uh, go and support uh, (coughs) the church in more, amen. They've been around just as long as we have, hallelujah, and they are a blessing, amen. So let's let's see, I think that's all the announcements I'm going to say for tonight, amen. And the Sunday mornings, I try to do almost all of them and then try to dwindle out during the week and then right back on Sunday again, announcing everything. Uh, Let's take up the offering this evening. Those are all the announcements. Let's give, hallelujah. Once again, let's not forget what we have up and coming. There's a few things, amen, that we would like to get done before our next revival. I would like to finish up the stage. Um, it'd be nice if we could get the bathroom done. I don't know about that, um, but at least maybe we can get the ceiling on in there. And this all takes finances and everything that we do, every all the money that comes in goes right back into the ministry, whether, whether it's beautifying the God's house or if it's going right back into revival, uh, to, to a revival, to a flyers, to outreaches, feeding the outreach team, paying for the expenses, keeping the utilities on. Amen. There's so many things, amen, that the finances go towards. And I just encourage you, amen, to give. Especially, most of all, just pray. And I'm even going to get into just a little bit tonight in my sermon. And so I was kind of thinking back and forth whether to take offering after service, but we're going to go ahead and take it now. So I just encourage you, be obedient to God. Give into the kingdom. It is well worthwhile. And even in the sermon, you'll see even more why we should do it. Hallelujah. As Brother Ken prays for the offering. Amen. Thank you. 
position, you are dismissed. Glory to God. Let me get this switched over. Amen. Genesis 14, 18 through 20. Genesis 14, 18 through 20, hallelujah. To start this off, amen, part 10. Though some people are terrified of heights, all people, I want you to get this, all people get a perverse pleasure from being higher than others. One time or another, we have had this effect upon us. The tallest boy in class looks down, literally, on his shorter classmates. Being ranked higher or having a higher income or IQ or GPA or test score or even a social standard at one point in time we get this weird like I said, perverse pleasure of being better or having a higher ranking. And all these are recipes for pride. We love being above others, which makes things interesting when we see God described as God Most High in Genesis 14. So let's go ahead and read our text. Verses 18 through 20. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. In Hebrew, God Most High is El Elyon. That's what it stands for, is God Most High. And the reason I opened up with talking about pride, because, like I said, all of us have been there, whether we want to admit it or not. It's a pride issue. Oh, I, I did this. Well, you know what? I did this. Or my GPA is 3.9. Well, mine is 4.0. Even if it's just a smidget. We get this pride of doing better or having a higher level. And in our story, this is another story I'm going to repeat myself as I've been during this series, is I want you to go back and read the story for yourself. I'm going to give you context. I'm going to give you the main scripture where we're coming from. But you know what? Go find the little details yourself in chapter 14 to see what else God wants to say to you. And where I'm coming from right now, the reason I talk about pride is because pride makes ourselves or we put other people above God. And this is why in this portion of text, it is countless times, or even in just these three or four scriptures, it says it three times. God most high. Nothing can go past Him. There's nothing higher but see, a fallen nature, we always try to slip things in. And in our story, Abram's victory over the foreign kings, this is right after, or I wouldn't say right after, but this is in between after God gave Abram the promise and before he has Isaac. Actually, it's even, I think it's even before he has Ish Ishmael. But Abram's victory, they run into problems. Lot's his nephew gets into trouble. And Abram, finding out, goes and takes back, takes dominion and conquers. And this is Abram's victory over the foreign kings who overran the land of Canaan. Raised the question of who should get the glory 
for the victory. Once you go read this story for yourselves, there's like eight to ten kings all involved in this whole shindig. There's a bunch of them. The king of Sodom responded to Abram's victory by trying to grasp some of the glory for himself. When Abram returned from his victory over the coalition of the foreign kings, the kingdom of Sodom, who ruled over one of the cities that had been overrun by the coalition, came out to meet Abram. The king offered no word of thanks or congratulations, but rather said to Abram, Give me the people, or give the people to me, and take the goods for yourself. The reason I'm pointing this out, once again, is because of pride. What is striking about this response is that the defeated king of Sodom had no place at the bargaining table. But in his pride, he attempted to make a deal with Abram that would allow him to share in the glory. This offer by the king of Sodom was also a play for the stake in the glory of Abram's future success. See, like I said, this is right after God promised Abram blessing, descendants beyond anyone could imagine. And I, you know how it is. People talk. I'm sure it got around that there was a vision, that there was so, uh, God promised Abram great success. You know what? Everybody wants a part of that. But see, Abram clearly understood this subtle manipulation by the king of Sodom. Highlighting the king's pride in his rebuttal, in Genesis 14, 23, Abram says, I will not take a thread or a sandal or anything that is yours, for fear you would say I have made Abram rich. See, in our story... This is why even Melchizedek comes in and says key words. God Most High. He had an understanding. And before I get ahead of myself, remember what the downfall for many people is pride. Remember Lucifer. He said, I will be greater than God Most High. Well, then, then he's not God Most High anymore. Lucifer's pride stepped in the place. And God struck him down because it's like, no, that's not going to happen. Let me show you who God Most High is. There's another story. Just to touch bases on pride briefly. In the Old Testament book of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar was off the charts arrogant. You can read that in Daniel around uh, chapters like 1 through 4 and I think even beyond. The prophet Daniel warned Nebuchadnezzar that because of his immense pride, he would be driven from his palace to live like a wild animal. Nebuchadnezzar scoffed. Then for seven years, Nebuchadnezzar lived like a beast. On all fours, eating grass, doing some crazy stuff. That's probably where werewolf came from. Only when his heart was brought low, and his eyes were lifted up to see the one true God. Did Nebuchadnezzar finally acknowledge God as the Most High? And then he was transformed back. Daniel 4.23, quickly, at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. I would hope we would be a little more quick to response. I mean, think about this. Seven years, Nebuchadnezzar. I think for me, I would hope that right after I got turned, oh, I, I praise you, I repent, <laughs> change me back. Seven years, this is how prideful he was and even then there's times this is this is a a grow this is a thing in people that is very manipulative that some people don't even know that it is happening they have a pride issue that needs to be healed 
that needs to be changed, yet because of pride, they won't. They won't ask for help. They won't go to God for repentance. They won't, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove them right that I don't have to. I think that's where some people get into this stride of, well, I'm going to prove that I can serve God without having to go to a church service. I'm going to show them wrong, even though it's in God's word. He says, do not forsake. But I'm going to prove them wrong because you know why? It's a pride issue. You were wrong, but you're trying to prove everybody else wrong. And this is where this is so important because if God is most high, you'll step down from being authority in your life. Let's not be Nebuchadnezzar. Because we may not be turned into or live like a beast, but we'll be headed for destruction. There'll be calamities in our life that could have been avoided. But because of our pride. That's a big one in finance. I don't have a problem. And then you're spending, and you're spending money that you don't have. C.S. Lewis once said, as long as you are proud, you cannot know God. And ain't that the truth? Pride is that sinful tendency to exalt ourselves, to live as though we are the loftiest beings in the universe. Uh, You came across those people. It seems like the whole planets and the sun, everything revolves around them. See, as long as we're always looking down on everyone or everything, we will never see the one who is above us. So before I go on, there's a couple questions I want you to think about as I'm preaching the rest of the sermon. Who are you lifting up in your heart today? Is it yourself? Oh no, I love God, but what does your action say? Is it another person? Oh, I love God, but you know, I can't do what God is calling me to do because I have to go do this. Or, or my little Hito has a soccer game. Or is it the most high God? Numbers twenty four sixteen: the utterance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the most high, who sees the vision of the almighty, who falls down with eyes Wide open. Going back to our text. King Melchizedek of Salem reminded Abram that El Elyon was the source of his victory. And God alone deserved the glory. Do you see how he attached everything to God Most High? He said, bless Abraham of God Most High. And blessed be God the Most High. King Melchizedek provided a big contrast to the king of Sodom's manipulation and grasp for glory. Melchizedek comes and bless Abram. But in blessing Abram, He used the name El Elyon, God Most High. See, this is one of the reasons I've learned this over time, and can I tell you, it took some time. And when somebody comes and gives me praise, I always attach God to the name, to the praise. Oh, thank you, brother, but man, it's God's. God be the glory. God has blessed me. God has helped me. God has changed me. God is still working on me. Because he's the true source of victory. He is the most high. El Elyon is a compound name of God comprised of the singular El. Remember, El stands for God, our Lord. I preached on the name Elohim, which is the plural. Which is the name that was used of God as the all-powerful creator. El Yon itself means the heights, or the one who dwells on the heights. Melchizedek reminded Abraham that God as the creator was higher than other, any other power source. And I don't think he wasn't only reminding Abraham, he was also trying to 
put Sodom in the correct frame of mind. You don't deserve the glory. God does. And God's vessel does. All other kings and powers and lords were only using the authority that had been delegated to them. El Elyon alone was the possessor of heaven and earth who has delivered Abram's enemies into his hands. Psalms 42, 2, 4. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us the excellent of, ja- of Jacob, whom he loves, Selah. See, the more I think about this title, this characteristic, the more I think that we should be talking more about God, more about Jesus, more about who he is. We can talk all day about our favorite sports player. We can give him the stats. And more than half the time, we can't tell one story from another in the Bible. We have to really think about, what does God has helped me with now? Where is God in my situation? Can we remember that He's most high and he is awesome. El Elyon is a name used throughout the Old Testament revealing God is above all gods. That nothing in life is more sacred. Do we have an understanding of these words? Sacred. Something that you don't transpire against. Something that you don't try to lose When something's sacred, you protect it. He's indeed the Lord Most High, the one who reigns supreme. He is greater than any force of darkness in this world. He is bigger than any problem we might come up against. See, in daily life, struggles and battles, we just need to be reminded that God is still in control. He will never lose his power or his might. Jesus cannot be hacked. That's one of the things I think about technology all the time. Like, man, you feel cool. You feel like all in power. You know, like when the people get these smart houses and they can go from their phone. I remember, I think it was Summer's uh, cousin was messing with his wife where he was turning off the TV and turning up the heat from his job. But how many know that that stuff can be hacked? And then you're wondering, what the, I ain't doing nothing. I, I, mean, I wonder how his wife felt. She's like, I have no control. What the heck is going on? God cannot be hacked. He does not lose control. He knows what's going on. And though the world feels even darker nowadays, he has still... Conquered death and sin. He still is mighty. He still is Lord. And you know what? He still should be exalted over all. Psalm 7, 17 says, I will praise the Lord. According to his righteousness. And will sing praise in the name of the Lord most high. Time after time, this is what kind of gets me and what kind of vexes me in churches nowadays, especially men, because you know what? It's back dealing with pride. They will not stand. They will not lift their hands. They will not sing. Oh, because I'm a man. No, because you're prideful. Well, I'll I'll praise God, you know, in, in, in my house. Okay, so you're a closet Christian. Or let me, let me go ahead and offend some people. You're a coward. God wants us to be. Coward is different than being shy. 
Let me just get that straight. A shy person can still be bold and go and talk to and witness to, and I've seen it. A coward is the closet Christian. Only will proclaim Jesus' name when somebody else is, man, I was at church. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian too. Where you go to church at? Um, I don't remember the name, but I, you know, I go there you know, every once in a while. So you don't go anywhere. <laughs> See, you're going to, when you truly look at God as El Elyon, as the Most High, you're going to strive to be where He's at. I have God in my home. Oh, I'm sure you do. But it's your home. This is why I push the issue of this is God's house. This is where this is set apart from your house, set apart from the world, set apart from any other building, even though, yes, we're in a storefront area, but this area is sanctified and should be sacred to you and I as his temple, as a place where it's set apart for God the Most High. But in our pride, oh, we, we can go to a church that looks better than this. Well, then why don't you come help support, invest to where this can get up to par? God doesn't really look at the condition of the building. If that was the case, he would have left us alone a long time ago. Like, oh man, they're dirty and sinful and just, man, stained. Oof. Smell bad too. Full of iniquity. He goes, no, I can go in and help. Clean it up. That's why I, I actually kind of like it like this. As we're doing little bits and pieces, we're a work in progress just the same. We're seeing things get better. We're seeing things get painted. We're seeing things going up. And that's just how we are. God is showing us through the building. Where we have to make changes. You know, it, tearing down that wall kind of hurt because, you know, it was looking kind of nice. But God, the way we want to do it, the way to make it more functional for future endeavors, it need to be torn down. So we're tearing down that wall to make another door to make a passageway for plays and different things. And that brings change. But you know what? That opens up for more things. But in our pride, we can stifle the move of God. Taking away God most high. Oh, no, he's just God. Almost belittling him to little g. El Elyon derives from the root word or root definition of go up, ascent. So that El Elyon may be thought of spatically as the highest. El Elyon denotes exaltation and it speaks of absolute right, the absolute right to lordship. El Elyon, this distinct name, sets God apart from all the would-be competitors, our rivals. As the Most High, the God of the Bible is what? Supreme. Nothing higher. Grammatically, people are probably, well, you can go from Most High to Highest. No, it's the Most High. It stops right there. As the Most High, He surpasses all else. No one can go toe-to-toe -to -toe or see eye-to-eye -eye with the Most High. You ever been next to a tall person? You can't see eye-to-eye -eye with that person. They're higher. They're taller than you. Well, I can get up on the stage or get a step stool. That's the whole point of this. God is Most High. They tried that with the Tower of Babel. To try to see eye to eye to God and look what happened. 
No one can raise himself or herself above God and look down on God. Psalms 91.2. Here we go again. I will praise you, O Lord. Will you? See, I'm talking mostly to men in this aspect of praise and worship because, like I said, pride is a kicker. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. Well, you know, I'm a man. You know, I just, I don't be telling people my business. But can you tell them what God has done in your life? Can you sing these songs that we sang this evening? Because of who God is? It's crazy. I didn't tell my wife or Molly what I was preaching tonight, what name I was going with. But really quick, let's look at making war. The chorus says, making war in the heavenlies, tearing down principalities, principality, standing firm in Jesus' victory. But this next line is the kicker. Making war in the heavenlies, casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It's almost like a mic drop right there. <laughs> it's in the song. But if you weren't able to lift your hand and sing it, then I don't, don't th think you get the picture. Because right then and there, you need to cast down your attitude, your haughty attitude, your prideful demeanor. Because you're exalting yourself above God in that very moment. And yes, I hope some men and some people do get mad at me. That maybe you'll start thinking about what I'm talking about. Is he really the most high in your life? Because if you're standing there during song service, or any other time somebody's saying, you know what, let's give God praise. It could be on an outreach. I've seen that on outreaches. Oh, we're going to give God some praise right now. Is, is he not worthy? Is he not the most high of your life? Well, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of mad. Well, it doesn't matter what you feel. He's most high. Let's go back to, I think I might be even getting into that. I'm not sure. Uh, some of these are kind of blending into each other. How these names are stacked up. But most high can mean king of kings, lord of lords. It's two stacked names, three stacked names. So when you, let's go back and look at kings. It didn't matter how you felt. It didn't matter if you're on your deathbed. If the king called you, you came. That's the most high. People did it for earthly kings, but yet the king of kings, Lord of lords, God almighty, God the creator, Elohim. Oh, can, can you just give me a pass? And who knows, especially after what I preached this morning, what if God wanted, he's calling you, and he was going to bring healing. But I feel bad, so I'm just going to stay. Now, granted, I understand, you know, God is a loving, forgiving God. I'm not trying to put that on you, that if you are on your deathbed, and, and, you, and I'm not telling you to come to church. We'll bring church to you. But if for some reason God does tell you and you're on your deathbed and God is saying go, not a person, or maybe God is speaking through a person, then there's a reason you should be there and you should do everything you can. That's the difference. You're not just going off emotion, but if you feel God telling you, or if you know beyond a shadow of doubt God is saying do this, then do it. Be obedient. Let your pride down and let the Most High control and give you the benefit. Shoot, even the first song. Bring a psalm to the Lord. I think it actually comes from these scriptures. For him, from his spirit and from his word. Lift your voice and rejoice. For our God is a mighty king. I 
I will praise you. It gets on my nerves when somebody that's a Christian talks more about their favorite YouTuber than they do about God. It gets on my nerves when somebody talks more about this, their favorite sports person or whatever the case, their favorite show. All these scriptures that I have stated keep saying, I will praise the Most High. I will sing about the Most High. I will tell of your marvelous works. Man, the things that God does is way better than TV. Yes, sometimes we watch these shows to pass time, but man, if you really think about it, the things that God is doing far outweighs and is far greater than what God is, what p- people are doing on TV. Better than what the Kend- or was it, Kardashians are doing. And thank God I think they're on their last season. I heard it on the radio the other day. <laughs> He is over all. And so because he's over all, as I'm bringing this to a close, in our text, Abram acknowledged El Elyon as the source of victory by offering a tithe to him. Now hold up. It says he gave the tithe to Melchizedek. There's some key things in here. The way structure was set up, let's look at verse 18. Now Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. The priest of God most high were the only ones ordained to take the offering and offer it to God. That's how it was in the Old Testament. There was a set people, a royal priesthood. Those were the only ones that can go into the, uh, the Holy of Holies. Everybody else had to stay. Yes, they come and repent, but they could only go so far. And to honor the Most High, Abram gives a tithe. This is even before tithe and offering was even like a set thing. This is why I always go refer to this when people say, well, we, you know, we don't really have to tithe and, you know, it wasn't in the New Testament or whatever. No, it's in the New Testament, but when they set the laws, the commandments, you know, most people try to look at the commandments and, you know, after Moses put the laws in place, but this is even before. This is a father of our faith, Abraham. Abraham put this into play of offering, of tithe. He gave a tenth of all. Honoring God as the most high. See, this is what we're doing when we give our tithe. We're honoring God as the most high. Every single paycheck. God has given me the ability to work. He's given me the air I breathe day in and day out. He's given me the sun, the moon, the stars, the, even the rain. So you know what? To honor God, I'm going to give him a tenth. I'm going to give him a tithe of my income. He honored by offering. He honored by giving back. Even in our text, Melchizedek's blessing of Abram was also a reminder that God, of what God had already promised Abram. When he first called Abram out of Ur, And that God will be the source of Abram's blessing. I mean, that's even a story in itself. If you want to go back and read that. God calls Abram and says, leave. And as you go, I will tell you where you need to go. Most of us, we need a destination. God, I ain't moving until I know where I'm stopping. Back to the pride thing. I got to be in control. I've seen it in my life. My own experiences. God would say, just go do this. Well, what's the outcome going to be? You'll find out when you do it. 
But God, you know, even though God doesn't set us up for failure, sometimes he allows us to fail so that we learn. I don't want to do it if I'm going to make a mistake. Well, maybe you should heed God and listen to him. Maybe you won't make a mistake. Oh, I said heed. That was back in the first the sermon this morning. To be healed, to be restored, what we must do, heed. Heed the voice of God. Why? Because he's the most high. See, in Genesis 12, too, I'm not going to read it, but this is part of Abraham's blessing. God says, I will bless you, Abram. I'll make your name great. I'll get, make you a great nation. And this text tells us included with our main text, that Abram responded to this reminder that God was the source of this victory. See, the spoils of war he brought in, and because God was the source of victory, he gave back 10%. He tithed. He tithed to Melchizedek on behalf of the Most High being the ultimate source of his future blessing. So even one of the sermons down the line is going to be Jehovah Jireh, my provider. The reason I continually give is because I'm honoring him because I know he's going to provide for me in the future. He's provided me in the past. He's provided me for in the present. And he's going to keep doing it on until, well, for eternity. Why? Because he's Most High. Our tithes and offering are in the same way a declaration that God is our source. And because he's the possessor of all things, we will trust in him to provide our needs. See, there's significance in everything that is written in the Bible. And I'm bringing all, most of this just from a few verses. Yes, and understand the context of the story, but once again, I want to prick your interest, your curiosity. Is what Pastor said about this story and context really what the Bible says? I didn't read it to you, so I hope you go back and be like, hey, uh, Pastor, there's something I came across. Are you sure? <laughs> Make sure what I'm saying is right. There's a lot of preachers that won't do that. They want you to just take their word for truth, and that's kind of another pride thing. They don't want to ever be wrong. I think that's everybody, but can you put your pride down and say, I'm wrong. I made a mistake, or I read it wrong, or God, for, forgive me. But that will put God back in his place, saying, you know what, I'm a human, I make mistakes, but you know what, his word is infallible. Even in that, because of Abram having that understanding of who God is, he could confidently reject the king of Sodom's offer. See, in the offering of his tithe, he had already acknowledged God as most high and as the source and provider and the victor. We are all tempted repeatedly to confuse our resources, jobs, money, homes, as our source. When we grasp and grab after these things to supply our needs, they become idols, replacing our worship of the one true God. You see that idol worship is always popping back up. Because I think it is the devil has painted a pretty picture. Shoot, we even, there's a show, just almost outright, American Idol. Well, let you know that the, whoever did that show is not a Christian, because they wouldn't have named it that. But of course, people are like, American singer doesn't sound as good, it sounds kind of country. The devil is trying to replace our worship. 
He tries to distract us. He tries to bring things in. We must be reminded like Abraham that God most high is the possessor of heaven and earth. Genesis 14, 22. But Abram said to the kingdom of Sodom, this is actually the scripture right after our main text. Or a couple of scriptures. And he says, I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth. Then he goes on to say, I will not take. Do you notice that he says, I have raised my hand to the Lord? Remember in one of the past sermons I talked about people don't swear in by the Bible anymore? That's what Abraham was doing. By the hand and eyes of God, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because he's God most high. If you go off of him and saying, you know what, I'm looking to the most high as my backer. You are saying something substantial. But nowadays, they've changed that. They've brought God down and say, now you can just swear off of yourself. I'm like, man... <laughs> This, almost, this goes back to the scripture of our hearts are what? Deceitful? Desperately wicked? Who can know it? Only the Most High? Even at times, even though we're striving, sometimes we, we make up these plans and strategies for our benefit and not for other people. See, we must learn to give Him the glory that is due. Can you say amen? And in so doing, we will come to know that His name is El Elyon, God Most High. We need to keep him in his place. The world is trying to, just like how they're doing in these rides where they're pulling down statues and things. And one thing I would like to say that even if that statue has a bad connotation, it's a reminder not to do that. Why tear it down? I mean, it's already up. Yeah, then maybe they shouldn't have put it up in the first place, but let's use it as a memorial to be like, let's not go back to that. If that flag has a certain demeanor, while the people are carrying it, let's not go back to that. Back to slavery, back to segregation, back, you know, and that's where people are going wrong nowadays in their fight for injustice. They're, bring, they're bringing racism and segregation. That's what kind of chides me a little bit because, oh, you know, the, it was the white people. Now let's just go support black while well, you, then you just segregated just again. So let's go back to what the Most High says. He says we all have sinned. White, black, purple, blue, green, yellow. And we all fall short of the glory of God. See, if we look to the Most High, He looks to us. He looks down on us and says, you know what, I forgive you if you just repent. And He can do that because He's the Most High. That we're not greater. See, that's where a lot of this is. Oh, you know, we're trying to prove that we're just as good or greater than the white cl race. No, we're just as bad. Only God is good. Only God's the most high. And you know what? We need Jesus to change our hearts and minds. We need Jesus to heal our land. You know what? I have raised my hand to God and I'm going to preach the gospel how it is. I'm going to come against the tyranny. When it comes against the powers of darkness in this world through the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's not going to happen. Change is not going to happen through our own strategies. It's not going to happen through our own ideas. Only through the Most Highs. Only through El Elyon. 
Let's learn to put him in the right place. Even when people are around us. As me and one of the brothers were talking before service, I like what he said, but we need to have it in right context. We were talking about Jesus. Jesus offended people. But that offense, if you do the study, is the trigger for the trap or trigger for the things to come about. And that's why Jesus offended, offended people so that it would trigger things and p- hopefully people would see, oh, why did that come out? Man, I do need a Savior. I do need a God. Why did that get me mad? Does giving, talking about giving, tithe and offering, does that get you mad? Then maybe you should see why it does. Pastor's always talking about praying and witnessing. Does that get you mad? Then maybe you should see why it gets you mad. God's always talking, pastor's talking about lifting hands and giving God praise and worship. Does that make you mad? Then I even said, I hope I offend some people, so I hope it, tr- and you, you see, maybe I shouldn't be getting mad at this. If I truly love the Most High, I should be able to surrender. This is like I said, in worship. We lift our hands in praise and worship, and we should be able to, God Most High, I give it to you. I surrender. Some of us know this position a little all too well. You're giving it to God. Because what? He is the Most High. And when you do that, when you surrender, you really become to know his name, El Elyon, the God Most High. If I have every head bowed and every eye closed this evening. Daniel 4.34, I want to read again. It says, at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. Or maybe you're in the class where you have understanding now. And you learn that you need to give your life over to the Most High. In this scripture, it says, I bless the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever for his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation it lives on the God I serve the God you need to serve is the most high God there's no one greater no one that can stand toe to toe and if you're in this place And you know you need to repent and get your heart right and give your life to Jesus Christ. We're going to pray. That was one of the things of King Nebuchadnezzar in his first run-in with Daniel whenever they threw his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. When they pulled them out, At that moment in time, his eyes weren't open because you know what? He said, they're God. They should be allowed to praise and worship their God. And if anybody comes against it, they'll have to answer to me. But it was still their God. It never became his until this moment in time where God had to bring him down to the lowest of low and really knock his pride down. I pray that doesn't have to happen to us. That you know what? You can get it right right now. And be blessed. And be helped. In all situations. 
honor him with your life. Offer your life to him because he is the most high. He is worthy. So if you're not saved, we're going to pray in a little bit, but I want to address backsliders. I've seen Christians get so full of themselves to where they're the point. They become like Nebuchadnezzar, but they have the knowledge of who God is. But yet somewhere it gets perverse, it gets twisted. And they become like Lucifer saying, you know what, I don't need God. But now, you've seen where that got you. You've seen the effects, and you're like, man, I should have never. You know, God still loves you. He just wants you to repent and come back. If that's you, lift your hand in this place, saying, I need to rededicate my life. I have put myself or other things before the Most High. And tonight, I need to get it right. If you're on live stream, We're going to pray, and I want the ones that have never prayed before to join in. Repeat after me and mean it with all your heart. Say, Jesus, I accept you as the Most High, as my Lord and Savior, as my Redeemer, because I believe in you. I believe you died for me and rose on the third day. Forgive me of my sins because I'm a sinner. Make me a new creature. Help me to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Once again, if you said that prayer, please call us, message us. Or come next service, amen. Let us know that you pray so that we can help you. The sooner the better because the devil knows he lost somebody else to God. See, that the devil doesn't care about you. He just cares whether in that prideful state he just wants to have more than God. He still thinks in his fallen state that he can be higher than God, that he can be greater. So knowing that he's He tries to still kill and destroy all that God has, all that God is trying to do. But if you continue to live for God, you'll have that protection, that refuge, because He is the Most High. So please message us, amen. Now, saints of God, It's not only pride, but for the most part, pride usually gets in the way of the Most High. But if God has dealt with you, whether it's pride or any other thing, sometimes it's cowardice. will put you in a place of putting something else above the Most High. God can give you the confidence, the courage, the boldness. Or if it is pride, God can help you to be humble. Take this time, even on live stream, take this time to get a hold of God as we are going to sing this song. Come, get a hold of God. Make Him your own memorial. Saying, this is for God. This is where I laid my pride down. This is where I laid my cowardice down. These altars are open. We're going to sing this song, Get a Hold of God. Oh, Lord, you search me. You know my way. Even when I fail you, I know you love me.
but we are perfect through Christ and we seek we seek him we need your presence hallelujah Lord oh worthy is your name we love you we thank you and we praise you God hallelujah he's the most high man he gives us strength he gives us He gives us things that only the Most High can do. Let's be reminded of that. Having that understanding that, you know what, He's above all, makes me, makes, it reminds me of a song that we still need to make the music video. I keep telling people we're going to do it, and I keep forgetting. But it's a remix song called Nod Your Head. And in my rap, I talk about Him being above all. Highly ranked. He's chosen to be above all. Highly ranked, he's above the law. Highly ranked, that he has all authority to help us, to move mountains, to move, and, well, not even move, but to still the storm. It was just like the disciples are like, who is this that can talk to the storm? and it obeys. It's because he's the most high. And that should bring comfort, that should bring motivation, that should bring encouragement. It's like, man, I serve the most high. I'm living for the most high. 
that's like having, you know, that's like having the person with all the money and all the success in all the world that has those connections. You know that wherever you go, if you drop that name, you get VIP customer service. And that's who we have as our Savior. Did you need something? What's up? Or your back has been hurting? All right, we're going to pray. Amen. Like I said, anytime somebody's hurt, anybody that needs prayer for anything, please come up during an altar call. Come up during an altar call so that we can pray. Hallelujah. All right. So your shoulder, shoulder blade, can you do what I told Molly to do? And I was thinking about, I think what we can do, I think it would be best if we... Um, I don't know, stand straight up against the wall so that you can't shift your shoulders. Go ahead and try it. Bring it. You're just a little bit off. So if I'd ask you if there's anybody that you're mad at, that you can think of, that's your sister. Not your mom, not your dad, because he disciplined you or anything, cousins, nobody. But we're going to go ahead and lead you in the prayer. So just repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I forgive all those who have sinned against me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I actually kind of went the other way for a little bit and then came back. <laughs> Help me to live for you. I thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. See, it, it went out. It was like he went past and then boom, went back in. You and Brother Ken saw it. How do you feel? It's gone? Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. See, that's, I'm even in awe when that happens. I, I like I've seen it before. But I, it makes me stop. It makes me stop in my tracks. And that's, that's just being in awe of what God can do. As we're sitting there praying, his hand shoots out. And it wasn't him shifting. His, that's why I had him stand back against the wall, bring his hands like that. And usually when it's off, there needs to be some kind of alignment. And God will align and then the pain is gone. And that's what got, he was healed. And sometimes, like I said, even though he couldn't think of anybody, many times just saying the prayer is that you're just trying to cover every basis. Like maybe there's somebody that just subconsciously I'm not thinking about. I remember years ago, I thought I was over it. But then this person's name came up and I boiled. I was like, why? I was like, man, I guess I'm not over it. So I had to go back and be like, you know, God, I, for, I forgive. I forgive. Forgive me for holding that against this person or holding whatever. And thank God, you know, I didn't have any sickness or anything that affected me, but I, it hit me. That offense thing, it like his, his name offended me. And I was just like, just was ready to fight and the person wasn't even there. His name was just mentioned. And so sometimes we hold these things. And so that's why even though it may not be anything or you can think of, maybe just saying it will still just instill something. Bring that protection of the Most High. See, He has all power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So be inviting people out. God is on the move. Amen. This morning, Sister Molly healed. Tonight, my son. We're believing God for Sister Liava because I truly believe that's going to be a true testament to what God can do. Amen. Because I know fibromyalgia is, is a crazy thing that even the doctors really not don't know a lot about it. But I know the most high and he can heal. He's Jehovah Rapha and he can heal nerve endings. He can do some awesome things. Hallelujah. So go with God. Amen. We're going to close in prayer. Amen. Brother Ken, we pray. Yes.
Amen. We love you guys. Don't forget the announcements, uh, the work night, game night, and then outreach. And then also we're doing the concert this Saturday and more. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Until next time.